Okay. All right. Making sure we're coming through here. Okay. Hey, everybody. This is Jason Eagle, your natural health authority, with another show today. Today is going to be a little bit of a playoff of last week's show, which is last week, let me remind you, uh, last week's show was about doing the mud packs, which is changing this energetic field. Uh, basically, patching holes in terms of um, your energetic field, which is essentially kind of like rewiring your computer. Because sometimes what's going on with the body is, is that the flesh and blood just doesn't have the building blocks and ingredients and it doesn't, is not able to get rid of toxins or the, the food is very poor. Or, and that's why the body, if you would think about the body as a machine, that's not working very well. That's why you're interested in health. But we also know that what controls everything is what's called neurology, which is an energetic field. Again, essentially, it's the computer. The computer is what controls the thing. So if you need to change something, the probably the best thing to change, if there's something not working correctly, it's the computer. Okay, That's what QRA is. The, today is going to be really getting into the science of what this is and also the real deep Quantum physics, quantum biophysics, that is a field, yes, it is a field, quantum biophysics or bio, quantum biomechanics, I'll explain that a little bit. So this is Jason Eagle, your natural health authority, I am Strategic Healing, that's my company, you can give me a call, 734-985-5891, uh, right now I am on my Facebook page, which is Strategic Healing, and I do these live and later I post them, uh, this radio show, on my YouTube channel, which is, that's Jason Eagle QRA, so that you can go back and listen to it again, because there, today is going to be a lot of information. Today is deep down the rabbit hole. In fact, it's the wormhole. <laughs> the wormhole is going to go very, very deep today, but this is all about the science of what we really understand, and we're understanding uh, is what the body is, okay? Okay. So many people, you know, come to whether it be a doctor or a health healthcare practitioner or even just themselves, which is, I, I I need to change my ways or I need to figure out because this is not feeling good. Something's going on in my body, you know. Uh, the the real if you boil anything down to uh, why anyone goes to anybody else, right, in terms of their health, or even goes to themselves and say, I'm going to question myself, it's because it's based upon these things. You know, why do I do what I do, okay? Because now today is going to get into the physics of, we've all noticed that there's, there's the I, there's me, and then there's my body. And people say, well, they're one and the same, but you have a ton of people that go, no, they're not one and the same. You know, ask the 80-year-old guy who's in his body going, I wake up in the morning and I still feel like I'm 17. I still feel like the me doesn't age, but yet my body. So it's, why do I do what I do? Because part of it is, is we know that our behaviors alter our body. What we do alter the body. Why is my body doing what it does? Meaning, I feel fine in my, my spirit or my thoughts, but then once I move my body or I do something, now my body does this. What can I do to fix it? What can I do to fix it? How do I know what I, my body, needs and wants? Okay, you, you get to many people and you kind of ask them, what do they want? And there's so many people, like even me sometimes, says, what do you want? I, I, you'd think it would be apparent, you know, and you got to sit there and kind of go, well, what do I want? Well, first of all, you want to feel better. You want to feel, and if you never felt better, then you want, you want better, right? Everybody wants to change and feel different or get back to how they felt before because either some people had a time when they felt, whether it was a kid or younger or teenager, where they're, they felt great, you know, they woke up in the morning and they were ready to go play. And now years later, I don't feel like it. My, you know, I want to jump up. I want to run after that thing, but I don't feel like it. Um, then we'll, later we'll get into some of these other questions, okay? So first of all, I am a QRA practitioner. A QRA practitioner, just like any type of health coach or whatever, a doctor or a chiropractor or a massage therapist or a nutritionist or an herbalist is... They, we are all people that is a person who is here to help you, OK? 
okay? Let's establish that. I'm here to help you, okay? Well, what is you, okay? What is you? Is you just the body that comes in? Because then a person also can, as I said, I establish that, like, there's, there's not really always a full connection between you, yourself, living inside you, and then you, your body, right? So let's start with, let's, okay, let's just hone it into what is you. What are you, okay? What does you, what does it look like, okay? Now there's, we can also get to a basis too. A person walking into my office or talking to me as opposed to a person who's laying in a grave somewhere is there's a difference. They're the same person, but one has life and the other doesn't have life. And I'm gonna get into the science of what that life is, okay? So again, this is Jason Eagle, your natural health authority, and um, I am what's called a quantum reflex analysis practitioner, which is really like a quantum biophysicist, meaning I really, the isness of a thing is not just the material world, but it's the energy that runs it. You can't see a thought. You can't see an electrical transmission of how my mouth is working. My brain is making this work. But where is my brain and what does it look like? Okay, so this is, I'm going to get into, this is a document. It's, it's called The Invisible Barrier. And it's, it's based upon three real books. One was called The Rainbow and the Worm, which is the physics of organisms, which is, comes from World Scientific Press in Singapore, 1998. Uh, another one's Biogenics, Bioenergetics, uh, Living Processes, an open university, third level course. This is open university. Uh, and then this is from another uh, book called From Molecular Machines to Coherent Organisms in Energy and Information Transfer. Okay, this comes from World Scientific, again, in, Sci in Singapore. So these are real scientific documents that are peer-reviewed, and basically there's a whole bunch of scientists that work on this, and then there's a bunch of scientists that don't know this. Okay, so um, what we get into is the symphony of colors, quantum coherence, and liquid crystalline continuum of all life. Whoa, that's a mouthful. What does that mean? Okay, so... The colors of life under a microscope, the tiny, lowly fruit fly larva reveals, it, reveals itself as a stunning symphony of pure shimmering colors and undulating patterns that never repeat, rating from its wings and body. So this is based upon studies that they've done on different animals, but this is in particular on a fruit fly, okay? Fruit fly larva, which is that's that little fly that's buzzing all around, you know, when you get your 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 uh, fruit that's sitting there and it looks like perfect fruit, but then all of a sudden it sits there for a while and then next thing you know, where, where do the flies come from? The larvae are on the fruit at all times. And what they do is, is as the as the fruit starts to lose life and starts to die, then these little larvae hatch and they start eating at the at the fruit and then they Boom, they very quickly go from this worm state into they hatch eggs like kind of like a, a caterpillar will do is it basically morphs and it turns into a fly. It grows. So, okay, they've studied this one, okay? And the fruit fly larva is not new, unique. The brine shrimp, the daphnia, and hosts um, a many other microscopic organisms. So, including also you, human beings, reveal a brilliance of color under the microscope. Even humans are like this. In bright sunlight, in the shafts of natural human hair, and entire cascades of rainbow colors shimmering with depths of light. Okay, we've all seen this. If you lay there, especially when you're a little kid, that's why little babies, when they first wake up, yes, their eyes are getting used to it, but they look and they look with this huge wide eye stare and they look at you and they're like, whoa, like little babies look like they're on drugs for a minute because when the, uh, they see perfectly and it, it takes a little while for them to develop, but what babies see is they see these glowing orbs. Now, first they start to see the eyes. That's why we are designed to see two orbs because the orbs are the eyes, two eyes, which is also two breasts because the baby is supposed to be able to, a living life, or especially humans are like, all they see is two things that give life, breast milk 
and love from the eyes, right? And what the baby is seeing, and you've laid there as a kid, or do that right now. Go out and lay outside and lay next to yourself or and put lay your head down on the grass, you know, or, or on a pillow or something like that. And when you see the sunlight, you'll see your hairs on your arm or like looking at somebody else, looking at the hairs on someone's face when you're a little kid. You see these rainbows. And is it just the reflection of the light? No. What it really is, is your hairs are radiating these, these rainbows of colors. Okay, life radiates literally all the colors of the rainbows. These colors are so radiant, special, and pure that you won't ever find them in artist paints. But what is the meaning of the colors? The colors under a polarized light microscope that earth scientists use to identify rock crystals. Say So like geologists are using this to look at, say, crystals, meaning you dig a crystal out of, and you look at, let's say, uh, you know, whether it be a diamond or quartz crystal, especially quartz crystals, is it's shimmering with this rainbow of colors of light, all of the rainbows, because what it's doing is it's splitting what light is into its individual wave patterns, okay? Quartz crystals um, reveal bright rainbow colors because they have an orderly arrangement of internal atoms and molecules. They fit together like crystals, like snowflakes. So things that are just blobs don't have necessarily that rainbow, the, what makes the most rainbow. That's why water, when you spray water and you see the rainbows, because the water droplets inside the round droplets are actually these crystalline matrix, which is, it's a crystal. It kind of looks like... Yeah, um, what was it, uh, if in, in the very first Superman movie where he made his fortress in the snow. He threw this crystal and then it grew into this great big huge, you know, uh, uh, fortress that, you know, and it was a crystalline structure, okay? Okay, um, but how can the colors emanating from a living fruit fly look similar to those from a crystal? When the trillions, that's one followed by 12 zeros, of molecular machines in its body, including your body, and how many more trillions upon that? Because you're much bigger than a fruit fly, okay? Um, all busily alive, transforming energy. These molecular powerhouses, including armies of enzymes working to break down. If you see what enzymes look like, they look like little robots. They've actually seen them with inside the DNA structure, inside the body structure with electron microscopes, and they look like little robots. They're seemingly unalive things as enzymes transporting proteins and things like that. And they look like little walking robots. It's amazing, okay? Meaning, robots are a program thing, but programmed with intelligence. So it looks as if the very building blocks of the atomic structure are intelligent. This is true, okay? Um, and supply energy to the vast network of microscopic cellular processes that must cycle together to keep the fruit fly on the move, you and I. And again, a fruit fly or a worm is not much different than a human being. Even though you got arms and legs, these arms and legs are kind of like, an, or an octopus. An octopus is a mouth and a butt, that's it, it's a tube. Living beings, including a worm, think about a worm in the ground, it's eating and it's pooping and it's leaving a trail of poop. That's what the body is, you're a tube. Yes, you got arms and legs, but see that all goes into feeding and getting out of where its waste is. Keep moving, okay? So humans, why we can say um, studying animals, studying all forms of animals, all the way down to singular cellular life, um, science does that because it, it totally applies to understanding what humans are. It totally is. That's why we do it. Um, you know, it's 100% relevant to understanding our life, right? So the liquid crystalline stake. The answer is both simple and elephant. Elegant <laughs> elephant. <laughs> the macromolecules associated with large amounts of water are in a liquid crystalline strait. It looks like liquid, but if you see the lines of force of energy, liquid just is like this amorphous type of, it has no order. But if you were to see the waves of energy inside of water, it's an order. It's a, looks like Legos put together or even more so like those, those geometric shapes that, that uh, like uh, Tinker Toys. It all fits together in this beautiful, uh, organized pattern. That's life itself. Okay. Um, all including water are 
aligned to form a continuum. This continuum links up the whole body, permeating through the connective tissues, the extracellular matrix, and into the interior of every single cell. There are lines of energy that connects everything together. Everything's unit united together in a web. That's why also everything is connected to everything else. So you are literally connected. You Every single body is connected together all the way out to the full universe. Is that you? It's this, this quantum entanglement. Everything is connected together. Okay, most importantly, all mo molecules, including water, are moving coherently together as a whole. It looks like they're different. Looks like I'm walking different from you. But what you do affects me, and what I do affects you on a very, very deep fundamental level. Okay. All molecules are macroscopically aligned, and that is not an exaggeration. The anterior posterior axis of the body from head to tail actually defines the global axis as though the organism is functioning as a single crystal. Your body, your arms and legs are moving differently, but it's all moving together because it's all connected, right? As seen under the microscope, when the axis of the organism is exactly aligned in the field of the microscope, its muscle fibers and other structures all adopt a single color, such as a beautiful blue, green, orange, red, etc. But when the axis is rotated 90 degrees, the blue turns to red or orange, okay? So as we, just like you would take and turn a crystal. When the little fruit fly larva curls its head to form a circle with its tail, it's, that's why yoga, many people do these things in yoga. Its global axis is correspondingly circularized and all its muscles and prominent structures switch colors. And, it, and so again, it all boom, moves as a whole. As you're moving, you're moving as a whole. The light that the human eye sees, so what your eye, when you're seeing light, you're seeing light and light vibrates at 10 to the 14th power cycles per second. Super, super fast. That's what light, and light is emanating out of everything, okay? Molecules, however, move much slower and at least 10,000 10, times slower. So the molecules will appear to the light coming through as though motionless. So even though that rock looks like it's not moving, it is moving. Everything is undulating and moving. Like when you look at that little plant growing, it looks like it's not growing, but when you put a time-lapse photography, you'll see as it, 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 it pulsates, it opens and closes and, and spins and opens and closes. And we're saying it's following the light. And then at nighttime, so the light, it opens up and it turns towards the light. And then at nighttime, it then turtles back. You'll see flowers. Daylilies do that. That's why they're called daylilies because they literally open up and at nighttime, they close back up just like a sea anemone because they are, are pulling their energy in when there's not enough energy to live off of because the sun is what makes everything run, okay, it then goes inside and uses its stored energy. And, and, and so it's this pulsating. That's what life is. We can see. Now, in our life, things move so slow that it looks like it's not moving at all, okay? Um, let's see. So, and so long as all the molecules in each muscle tissue are moving coherently together, it will give the appearance of static alignment and order, i.e. a crystal. It's like being able to take a sharp image at a very fast-moving object with sensitive film that requires only the briefest exposure. So when we're seeing life, that's what we're doing. Is we're taking snapshots. You're taking snapshots with your eyes. You ever like got in a car and you drive by or when you're sitting in a car and you see the car's wheels moving, the spokes on the wheels moving, but blink your eyes and suddenly you take a photograph. Your body sees it. The most coherent parts are the most active parts showing up in the organism as those with the brightest colors. When the organism dies, okay, when a person dies, you see their color go away. The colors slowly fade away and random thermal decay takes over. It starts to rot. So as I said, what's the difference between a person walking in here with life and a person who's not is literally the one is, a lim is, is emitting light. That's why when you see people get old, they turn gray, they turn yellow, they turn green. Or even when you see a mother who's pregnant, wow, you're shimmering. You because there's she's adding more life. She's growing life in her and she radiates. And that's not just like, oh, that's not just in my mind. Your body is picking up on it and you're seeing these what's called biophotonic emissions. Let me take a minute here. 
and let's go into an exact study. <laughs> I got it. So um, in Japan, what they wanted to do is they know that there are, but, but see, you have to be able to detect it. So what they did, this is, comes from a, a document called Biophotonic Emissions from Fingernails and Fingerprints of Living Human Subjects. So this was in Japan. And what they did is they created a box that people could stick their hands in it. It's a completely black box in a black room. And it has what's called a, a photo, photo multiplier tube meaning it's able to pick up on very, very small bits of, of light. And what they found is when the people put their hand in there, especially at the fingernails, right where the fingernails are is where you could see the most light coming out. So this thing detects very, very, very weak light. And there's not supposed to be light coming out of your fingers, right? There's not supposed to be light coming out of you at all, but there is. And where we see, that's why our touch, because our brain is more in our hands, because we touch things. And so we see two things. One, out of the fingernails is where the most of energy is coming out of. But also, everyone has a fingerprint. And if you look at the fingerprint, they come in a whirl. What makes that whirl? It's the energy that's coming out of you. Again, like what makes, when you throw a rock into a pond, what makes those circular things? Because something went into it. Well, guess what? Something's coming out of you. And what's coming out of you is making that whirl shape. Because actually people's fingerprints can change over their life. Even though you have your own, they can change. They literally can move and, and, and based upon the energetic level of a person. So, but mostly they stay your own pattern. You are you and you're your own pattern. And so that's why finger pinks are unique to people because your own pattern of energy, you are your own symphony. And that's what the fingerprints are is literally it's showing where the energy is coming out because we're sending energy out of our body almost as if like sonar, that's how we touch. We touch, so pe when people go blind, they're fingertips become even more sensitive and they can pick up on things that science goes, wait a minute, that's impossible. Like put five phone books on top of each other and stick a nickel underneath it and have a blind person touch that top book and they'll tell you where it is and if it's a heads or tails. <laughs> and there's no, like the princess and the pea, how do you feel it? That's a quantum physics uh, um, uh, basically uh, a problem or that, that story. That story is literally telling that there's a sensitivity Sensitivity that our body, and again, because what's sensitive? Touch goes through things because energy goes through things. So they were able to prove anybody, a human being, is your shooting energy. What we can also prove is that the people that are very healthy, there's more energy that's shooting on it. People that are not healthy as you're losing life or damage, uh, that energy is going away and your light starts to go, okay? Okay. So packets of sunlight. From there, you can begin to see hints of how life could interpose itself between two energy levels of the electron. This da, uh, this uh, uh, Zent uh, Gorky, he was a uh, Albert Zent Gorky, who he was the one that actually came up with a isolating vitamin C. He was a Nobel Peace Prize winner back in uh, I don't remember when he died, but this is the early eighteen early nineteen hundreds. Okay. So this, this quantum, and he was one of the first ones that developed what's called quantum biophysicist because he figured out that the body is the body a machine, okay? But is it living? So what's the difference between a living machine? It acts like a machine sometimes, which is a machine is ordered and it does what it's programmed to do. But a living thing does things that are random, right? So how can a, a, a like a pattern and random, Pattern means you can count on it and it's going to do the same thing over and over again, like a clock, right? Okay, but random is like one time it's three o'clock and then instead of going to two, it goes to six and then it goes and it jumps all over the place, right? That's random, okay? Life is a random pattern, which is two things that should be mutual. What, random pattern? Okay, that's what it seems like is that there's a random. So life is a living thing that's constantly changing. But there is a, a pattern to it because the pattern is, is it's responding to life all around it, okay? So uh, this uh, Alpert uh, uh, Zent Gyorki was talking about photons, as I said, biophotons, packets of sunlight trapped in chlorophyll, the pigment that gives plants its green color. Chlorophyll is almost exactly the same as hemoglobin, your red blood cells. The difference is, is that that 
Um, chlorophyll is, I believe it's a sulfur, um, or no, it's copper, okay? So it's a copper holding blood, whereas, that's why it's green, because when copper oxidizes, what color does it turn? It turns green, okay? So it's green blood or red blood. Red blood is because we use iron, ferric oxide. But see, in the, the plant animal world, blood is blood. It's living, and they do the same thing, which they store energy. The packets of sunlight absorbed by the plant, okay, so a little plant that's a green plant, the packets of sunlight. So the sun is shining on it, and sun is sending waves, but within waves look like what's called little BBs. If you would look at light, that's why way or light can be both a particle and a wave. The particles are little photons or little BBs of light. These packets of sunlight absorbed by the plant and including you boost electrons from a ground state to a higher energy level. It spins it faster. It's a top. Life is a top that's slowing down, but the light energy is in an uh, living energy all around us is constantly hitting it. And if it hits it just right or if it's in the right state, it doesn't slow it down. It speeds it up. Boom, making it go. From where electrons cascade down an energy staircase. That's exactly what our DNA structure looks like. That's why it looks like a, a circular or what's called a, a circular staircase, right? Okay. At each step down, part of the energy is sifted away to allow the green plants to grow, which then feeds the butterfly. So now we are all light eaters. This is what this, this guy uh, said. This is, he basically said this is that humans are light eaters. No, we're not. Yes, we are. Because everything we eat, even if you're eating animals, animals had to eat the green plants in order to make their flesh. And then when we eat vegetables and fruits and everything, Everything we consume comes from the sun. So the sun is packed energy that's inside of every living thing. And you got to eat living things in order to create more life in you. That's why synthetic foods and drugs and crap are life killing because they don't have these packets of sunlight in it. That's why it's so much better to take whole food supplements. You know, if you got to take drugs, okay, in order to do that, use that to then find it in the real world, which is its real living things. Because on an energetic level, if you want to spin the top to make it go faster and keep it going, you have to add energy into it, okay? All flesh is grass. This is what he said, okay? Uh, all flesh is grass, and grass absorbs pure sunlight. Because again, it, everything eats something that ate the grass, ate the green. So even in the water, in the ocean, there's what's called a phytoplankton and, and chlorophyll that's inside of phytoplankton, So which is basically little particles of little grass things, little living plants. And phytoplankton is, is that in the ocean, there's actually these hybrids of plant animal things. There are some that are completely plants and some that are animals and some that are these animal hybrids, okay? Which is, again, that's why this is true, which is all flesh is grass. All living things are interconnected and interdependent. They all rely upon each other. The reason this is possible is the first place is because the organism is an organic, coherent whole that stores and transforms energy and material most efficiently and rapidly. That's what life does, is life does this, right? So, you know, we're getting into, you know, figuring out what to do for your life, okay? So let's go back to this. What's the difference between alive or dead? Alive has colors of life, dead and dying is losing colors and doesn't have any colors. So that's why, this is, let me bring this back, that's why we say antioxidants. So the antioxidant fruits so if you ever heard this before, which is what things should I eat? Eat things with the most color in them. That's the fruits and vegetables that are the most, the purple ones, the red ones, the vibrant ones. How do I know at the grocery store which one to buy? Which one's going to taste the sweetest? It's the one that to your eyes looks the most vibrant in color. 
made it pretty stupid easy. That's how animals figured out. And then when you taste it, the sweeter things have more minerals in it, which means you are the lab. And so your taste and your eyes and your smell is you're the laboratory. It doesn't have to go into a medical laboratory and be tested by scientists. You are the lab. And all you have to do is re-wake up your eyes and your senses and follow those. But many times people are so dirty and so polluted, those, those senses are dead, right? Okay, so the organic applies, organic whole applies not only to the single organism, organism, but possibly to all sustainable ecosystems. Jim Lovelock indeed saw that the entire planet as a super organism in his what's called Gaia hypothesis, meaning the whole planet, including the whole universe, is all alive together. It's all, and there's different forms of life. Some that would be just mechanicistic, meaning like little, little living robots, like, again, like the enzymes, all the way up to the thinking creatures like us. But see, the thinking creatures have to have all of these other creatures living inside them. So really, you are, that's why we call it the, the biofield, or what we also call the microbiome, which is you are a community. Of all the trillions and trillions of cells in your body, there are more trillions inside your gut that are not even you. There are more of them than you, and we are the smallest part in the party, and we live in a negotiation, and we got to keep them happy, and they will keep us happy, right? So, and there is a difference between you and them, right? Them is you, but, you know, they live off of you. Okay, so from mechanicistic control to spontaneity and freedom. One of the reasons I'm talking about this on the show today is because I watched a show called Devs, D-E-V-S. It's talking about building quantum computers and things like that. And, and it really brings up these different things, which is, again, why do I do what I do? Why is my body doing what it does? What can I do to fix it? How do I know what I my body, now I'm connecting them too, which is, I am my body and my body, okay, what do I want? What does my body need? This is what the QRA is. It's a way of testing and giving you in living life forms, including the most energetic, strong, colorful, vibrant things into your body. What can I tell? Okay, so now that I've made a change, again, so people, and also do, I took those drugs or I did the surgery or whatever, how can I tell if it's working, okay? These are some benchmark markers, and I'm going to tell you that, again, we'll get back into the science of this, but just let's bring it back into home. How do I know if this is true, okay? When you do things to get healthier, so this is basic, stupid, easy. Take a person who is gray and an older person and start feeding them more nutrients and start with the greens and start with these phytonutrients and what will happen to them. They're, I've seen it. I've seen it happen. This is proof and they will see it and all their friends will see it. How do you know that you've, you're better? You go from dull to vibrant people that their now skin literally starts to glow and everyone goes, what did you do? Did you cut your hair? Again, the life is emanating out of them from, again, a plant. How do you know that a plant is dying? It turns yellow. How do you know that you fix the plant, meaning you stopped watering it too much or, or you, you know, you gave it some nutrients. It goes from yellow to green. Again, it adds more color. Again, we feel, okay, I'm depressed. Now I'm cheerful. Okay, how is it working? I feel a little bit better, right? I go from weak to strong. Weak, oh man, like it, it, I can't climb those steps like a wheeze and breeze. I've done these things. Again, it's stupid easy, just add more color, add more energy. And then there's other things we can do, but how do you know? I went up 20 more flights of steps and I wasn't huffing and puffing. Wow, that was amazing. I was sad and my life was sad, but now I'm happy. Even though the things in my life are still sad, meaning the conditions of, but I could, how is that? I was in fear and panic. Oh my God, what's going on? What's going on? To peace, Whew, man. And knowing, I, you know, I don't know. I, 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 I don't understand what's going on, but I know I'm going to be all right. I have a deep knowing. All of these things that we do will turn into this. And, and so you don't have to ask me or you don't have to figure it out. You will know. 
And there's a whole bunch of other things. I poop better, I sleep better, all of these things. But it comes from going back to just the basics of the true physics of this world, which is life begets life and death begets death. How do I know? Well, start with the food. That's basic, stupid, easy, which is like if it's a package and if it's canned and like there's no life left in it. And if it just came from the store and you literally had to cut it up and, and there's life in it. Or like, okay, cooked loses some life and raw keeps life. So if you can get a person that eats more raw foods, like that's it. It's right in front of you, okay? So here's where we get into the really cool stuff. The symphony of colors in the organism emerges from the grand ensemble of all its activities, playing spontaneously to a no preset scheme, meaning it's not the game and it's not the clock that does it. Full of unspected twists and turns as the organism goes about its business of living. You, your organism, including all the organisms inside your body. There is no one controlling organism from the outside. Okay, like this, okay? When you see birds up, and this is real quantum physics in terms of understanding the wave patterns of living things that are individual creatures like ants, but act as a whole. We've all seen this before, which is the birds that you see up in the sky where like a thousand birds go and then they move together and or like a school of fish. Who's following who? Where's the leader? Who's running the show here? They're not. They're all running it together and they're all following each other, but as each other, this kind of mastermind types of thing, and it moves as a whole. It looks like all these individual birds that move as a whole cloud, as a blob, and it takes on these really beautiful shapes. Are they taking hints from the wind? Are they, who's doing what? But what you know is for sure this is where things move together. That's why Facebook is doing what it's doing. That's because there's individuals, but we move as a herd. And we want to understand herd mentality. And you've got to understand the individual to understand the whole, right? That's why it's so important for us to do be healthy because we can all change each other. We can all for the better or for the worse, okay? So there is no... All organisms, an organism is distinct from a machine, okay? A machine is programmed and it can't get, you know, the, the toaster cannot be a microwave, right? But a living organism can morph and turn into, it can regrow itself and go from toaster to, to you know, change what it does. This is a living thing. It's responsive. That's why, you know, when we talked about, like, for instance, uh, Darwin, which is, he saw all these different birds, and did they morph and change, or what, did they just become that? It's both. It's both. There were birds that are formed that way, and then over time, there are birds that, when they stay in a certain place, and that particular type of nut and seed, they can change their beak. And if people say, I don't believe that, okay, why do people look like they're dogs? Why do dogs, why do people, couples start to look like each other and they'll either take on, now I can understand kids, when a kid comes out, you know, looks like my dad, looks like, because that's true genetics. But how can a person's face change and morph? And you've all seen it. People that then one person looks more like the other person or they both start to create and look a little bit like each other and create and, and morph and change. And again, the dogs and, and animals, people will look like their dog. Why? We know that this is, is, this is what's called plasticity, neuroplasticity, and bodies will change and morph and change based upon like putting on different outfits, putting on a different beak. This is how the body works, okay? So instead, all parts, okay, it's not coming from a top to bottom. There is no central controlling agency, no driver propelling or pulling the parts into action, right? There is no switching mechanism to turn any part on or off. There, there are no switches. It's all their switches are through ever. There are no managers transmitting a chain of command from top to bottom. Okay, like I talk about how the brain controls everything, that would give you the idea that it's like the Pentagon control, but it's, that's, it's not. It's why I said the brain hides itself throughout the whole body and, and it gives, the brain is not the boss. In fact, nobody's the boss. They all work together. Instead, all parts of the body are ultra sensitive. A small signal is sufficient to initiate disproportionately large effects because there is a coherent energy stored locally everywhere in the organism. 
So intercommunication is the key, with every part as much in control as it is sensitive and responsive. Let me give you a real example of how we've seen this in medical science. People that, for instance, there was a woman that uh, was a virtuoso violinist, meaning she was a professional and she was the best of the best and people paid her. And what happened is she, she had a brain tumor that was creating epilepsy and she was on drugs and sometimes it would work, but eventually it just didn't work. And eventually the doctor said, we're just going to have to cut that part of your brain out and that will make it stop because she was just shaking all over the place. But the, the kicker was, is that she was going to lose music because they knew through doing brain studies that that's where music is stored. They cut it out of her head and she lost her music. However, it came back and then eventually a number of years later she was able, and so the part, so what they figure out, was it that it was stored in different parts of the brain? Yeah, it's part of it. But what they actually figured out, what it really is, is it was in her fingers. It was in the muscles of her arm. They're little mini brains of muscle memory. And we, what we used to say, ah, there's not any, there is. There's true things in muscle memory, meaning the muscles themselves, the fingers could remember how to play it. And then it came back and it recycled. There's a bunch of examples of that. So that means even the brain is not controlling everything. The liquid crystalline continuum of the body facilitates rapid intercommunication. Okay, what that means is, like I say, is the nerves are like the wires. So your brain connects to everything. And so it's it's an old system like the way phones were, which is the lady plugged the things in and said, hello, I'm connecting you to this. Okay, but now we have new phones and the radio, which is where is the radio? It's all, it's waves all around it, the Wi-Fi, right? So that's how this system works, this quantum field or this the, through the quantum biofield this liquid plasma energy is able to go boom, super fast faster than light faster than anything and basically every it, it's the fastest communication it's like you know mercury which is he can go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth before you even finish saying hey tell him i said this <laughs> i've told them all like already that's how quick it is okay it is extremely sensitive to electric and magnetic fields and remodulates heat, light, sound, and mechanical pressure into bioelectricity and vice versa. The result is a perfect coordination from split seconds and minutes to days, months, and years, from individual molecules and cells to tissues and organs, systems of the entire body. We now know that every cell in your body every seven years gets replaced with a brand new cell. Now, some are younger. You, you flip through cells within seconds. So some are very quick ones. Some take a number of years, but the oldest one is seven years, okay? So what that means is you are not who you are and were. You literally are a new person. And like I say, which is, it's as if you are a 3D printer, meaning, okay, or like say, just take a printer, okay? Aging, we would say this, aging, as you get older, it's as if you're printing a document that keeps printing smudges on it. Or let's say you're printing a picture and then it goes and you got a smudge over here, right? So I like to say it like this, which is the nutrients, which is that's what the QRA is, is testing for using these whole food supplements that are designed to be the exact packets of light, the exact energy signature. We've used scientific equipment as well as the quantum biofield to then craft. That's what PRL has done. Just, you don't fully understand. I'm trying to describe to you how miracle and amazing this is. It got to the basis of it, which is if you change it from where it starts, if you build it up from where it starts and you build the organs up up from their energetic field, meaning give it its correct, remind it what its song is, remind what it's supposed to sound like. Then the nutrients then flood into that because the nutrients are that resonant. And literally the when you give it those right nutrients, it will suck it right up. And it will, but again, keep in mind what we really know that we're feeding it is we're feeding it light. We're feeding it coherent living force energy and energy begets energy. Okay, so um, the result is perfect coordination, all right? So quantum music, okay, if we could say, okay, the incredible hive of living activities can be called quantum music, meaning you're making your own thing, but you're also, your body is riffing off of, uh, so it's like jazz, meaning you can play a symphony, which is they're just, it's beautiful and everyone's in tune, but they're playing what's on the sheet, 
But what happens if there's a symphony building right next to it and they're playing a different one and it bleeds in and they start to hear it, okay? Either we go louder or they're going to mess us up or we become jazz and we go, ooh, yeah, like, okay, I'll riff off this and riff off this. That's what life is, is it's designed to not be opposed by anything else. So even if something opposes it, it's designed to riff off of it and then make, ooh, like even if someone drops something on the ground, which would be decoherent, good music is able to go, bam, and change and incorporate that into it, not be disrupted. So you can either be disrupted. If you give it more energy, it's able to very quickly adapt and then turn it into its, wow, it's as if they meant to do that. Wow, that wasn't a mistake. So like a good piano player, they make a mistake and you'll never know it. You'll never know it because it sounds as if, they, and that's how they feel too. It's like, oh, oh, well then I guess we're gonna go that way because it's living. It, it has its form but it's, it's adaptable. That's what life is. And most people are so weak and sore and painful that it hurts to even move, let alone change. And what hurts to move too is change your mind. Because first you gotta change your mind. I was living this way, it wasn't working for me. Now how do I get it to work? I want this to work for me, okay? Um, Spontaneity and freedom. The hallmark of an organism is its continuous spontaneity and freedom. Freedom. Mm. <laughs> Put that fist up there. Yes. We need freedom. Freedom of carefree, carefree childhood times. It's true. You can say little kids grew up in a war zone. They're happy. They, they can quickly go from being injured to like, oh, look, it, I'm going to go play. Like there's something moving over there and they see the light dance and they are intrigued by the light, right? We don't see the light anymore, but we can, right? So that is why it goes against the grain to hold organisms captive in the name of conservation. The ideal of an organic whole has important implications of how we have organized our societies. Science with love, okay? Is science love, love? Yeah, you have to have a new science, the new truth that involves love, because that's what it is. It is all love energy. Are the colors still there when the organism dead? The answer is no, of course. The colors emanate from a living. So you only can do this while you're alive, as far as we know, okay? So it's important to get this, get this going and get it fixed and get it figured out while you still got it. Because life looks at all life and says, do you know what you got? Like the death, if death, like the, if, if death could look, it would, it's jealous, <laughs> you know, because you got, do you know what you got? And so even I got a crappy life, but it's life. Wow. And there's such a big difference between when something's here and then it's not, and it's gone and it's rotting. Okay. A living organism with coherent motives of all its molecules, which can only occur when it's live. As an organism dies, random thermal motion takes over and all the colors slowly die and fade away. And it goes, we can see it, it goes into the ground. The rotting body will then turn into the worms. The worms go in, the worms go out, the worms do pinnacle on your snout. <laughs> That's what happens. And, and so life doesn't ever go, it just transforms and goes into something. But you're listening to me because you're all here and we're together in one place. And that's the goal is how can we stay together in this one place, right? Uh, what quantum mechanics or what a QRA is, is knowing, fully grasping what the whole body is, is it talks about, so quantum, what does quantum mean? Quantum means infinitesimally small. Like the particle goes down small, 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 and there's no particle anymore. There's only, there's nothing to touch. And that's what, so that means infinitesimally small things making the bigger things and all things do stuff, okay? It's the reason. Why does the robot do what it's do? It's because it's following what the energy is doing. And so again, if you want to change the mechanicistic robot, you have to change the genie in the bottle, the energy field inside the bottle. The good news is that on all levels, we can do this. That's what, like I said, last week is really, the mud packs are, is literally changing the energy, putting, plugging the holes up. Now, again, like I said, if you want to be stupid easy about this, just tell a person to eat good, healthy, living foods. If you're eating junk, start eating more good, and green is go, right? And then all the other colors of the rainbow. And the more colors that are in a food, 
And the more sugar in terms of how the sweeter and better that it tastes, not like a dull tomato that tastes like cardboard. There's nothing in it. There's very, very little life. And we can literally measure that because there's equipment that you can see the biophotonic emissions. And you'll see a really good tasting tomato will be like, and this light coming out of it, just like I said about your fingertips. Whereas a, a weak one, the one that tastes like cardboard, it's dull. It hardly radiates energy at all. And that's why as soon as you cut it, it just starts dying, right? And turns into mush, right? Um, are the colors still there when the organism's dead? No. In a mechanistic perspective, a Western science viewing life and its hallmarks, such as freedom, spontaneity, love, and consciousness, these may be considered as too elusive to be relevant. Like, I can't measure it. These may be considered as, and organisms may often be regarded as the same, okay? Life, it's just, just machines, just all little machines without the ability to express feelings or consciousness and thus may be subject to cold exploitation like machines, meaning nobody gets upset taking the toaster apart to figure out how it works, but giving rise to horrendous abuse of animals and scientific experience. Do you have to tear it apart to figure out how it works? No. Again, I don't have to do surgery on you. I don't have to do exploratory surgery, even hear from someone who did exploratory surgery to figure out what's going on. I can tap in with energy. That's what this is saying, is, is that the energy is coming out and you can tap into it. Use your own energy. Like I said, QRA is kind of like a modern car. You don't have to start pulling wires. And, Does that work? Did that do anything? No, you just plug the computer into it without hurting anything, without poking anything, and it will tell you, oh, you know, you got this much low and this, and, and that's what this is system is. Okay? The problem lies with how we choose to view organisms, not what they really are. Again, let's start with what are you? Well, let's start with the thing. You came in. Can you help me? The, the I'm me. I can help you. Let's first start with, do you know what you are? Do you know what you are? I'm telling you. So where do the colors really come from? The colors belong to the organism and accurately reflect the state of its consciousness from the moment it goes about living. The knower and the known. Science isn't about discovering facts of nature objectively or independently of us. Knowing depends irreducibly on both the knower and the known. That's what quantum physics get into, which is... Okay, you looked at it and you made it. How do we know that you didn't make it do what it did? You did, right? I looked at it and I made it do what it's doing. You know, you think I'm looking at it, I just saw what it did. Well, how do you know that you're looking at it didn't, like watching a person go to the bathroom, <laughs> they can feel you are, like that no one is, it, 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 everything is affected by thinking about it, by looking at it. Again, measuring something, even putting a ruler on something, you've pushed it a little bit and you've really shortened it up a little bit. Tiny, tiny little bit. But if you want to be super accurate, you've changed it. Again, once you look at it, you change it, okay? Knowing depends upon this knower and known. Artists and poets have always taken this for granted, but modern Western science seems predicated on severing our connection with nature. And so the major stand in Western philosophy is to puzzle over how it is possible to know it all. It took centuries of separating and reducing nature to the parts of the quantum of action before Western science was able to rediscover that nothing in nature is separate. You are not alone. Everything is at once both spread out as a wave and also localized as a particle. Okay, like I said, light is a wave and a particle. It's either one or, you know, pick a side, pick a lane. Which one are you? You can't be both. Yes, it is. Okay, that's the mystery there. Okay, the entangled web, seemingly separate objects from fundamental particles to atoms and molecules and increasingly larger objects all the way up to planets and whole galaxies are really mutually entangled like they're connected in a web. So the spider sits at the center of the web so that if you touch it with your finger out on the side, she feels it. She, she, it's, she feels it in her body, thereby knowing, oh, it's over there, and there's where the fly is. It's wiggling over there because I'm sitting at the middle of the web, and even though I'm not touching it, I'm touching the web, which means I'm touching it, okay? Entangled describes a state of being intimately and inseparably part and parcel of one, of, of one another. Quantum physics has also recovered the simple truth that other cultures have never doubted and call it aptly the entanglement of the observer and the observed. You're watching me and I know it. In other words, how we know determines what we know. 
There's a great doctor that really gets into this stuff, which is today many scientists believe the secrets of regeneration and healing lie not within the costly medical drugs or expensive medical treatments, but in the body's own quantum energy field, quantum biofield. Look of Dr. Bruce Lipton. Dr. Bruce Lipton, who's a well-respected doctor, and he's way off in the rabbit hole on this stuff, and will explain, explain it in the quantum physics, because this is all known. Now it's combining, which is, we thought that was just in the lab or just computers. We didn't think this was living things. This is living things. Living things are computers, right? But living computers, which means it's not stuck in a deterministic, you don't have to keep doing what you're doing. You can figure out what you need to do and make a change, right? Quantum physics is, 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 in other words, how we know determines what we know. As a biologist or biochemist schooled in routine or fixing, pinning, pulping, homogenizing, separating, and purifying, uh, take it all apart. You know, Take the watch apart and look what it's made out of. Then figure out how to put it back together again. Then you know how it works. No, you don't, right? There may be no trace left of the living organiz organization we were looking for. It violates everything life stands for and reinforces the illusion that the organism is nothing more than a machine, albeit a very complex one. The organic whole works by mutual intercommunication. The healthy body has perfect knowledge of itself because it is the most coherent. Every part of the body of it knows and responds to all other parts. There is a wisdom of the body. This is what chiropractors talk about, the innate healing. That's a big part of like the Palmer chiropractic. But listen, just get out of your way. Just give your body what it needs and get like a good worker. Like, what do you need? You need some coffee? Like, okay, just I'll stand out of your way. Like, I'll, you, know what to, you know what to do. If we could give the body what it needs and stand back, right? Rather than interfering, right? How do I, oh, let me help you. I'll move this over here. Oh my don't you understand? I the, like people that will tell you, like even a messy desk to people that are like that, the brain works like that. If you move what you think is a mess, you've just screwed up a system. That's not a system. It's not organized. It's organized in the way that they think. And that's the difference is this two different systems of like organization, this and this file and it's A to Z as opposed to, oh no, it was this day that led into this day, like driving somewhere. Many people that drive a place is because they remembered different, like that tree was there and I turn left to here and this and, and they have a map inside and it's a living map as opposed to something changes in a person, they won't know it. If they're following just a, you know, directions, they may not get there. Like how many people have driven into the water because their, their, uh, their, what was it? The, their, um, their phone took it there. They, they, they weren't looking and they're like, you know, didn't you know, like, weren't you looking? You drove into the water. I was just following directions. It told me where to go. It didn't know where it was going, right? It didn't, wasn't updated, right? So we have to have a combination of this update as well as being alive and aware and being coherent and being adjustable and being, you know, well, it said this on the page and then it's like, what was that show? Ron Burgundy, which is an, an uh, anchorman when he reads horrible things and said it and just did, because he wasn't listening to himself and suddenly, you know, he said horrible things on the air because he just, and then it took him minutes before even like, oh my goodness, did I say that? He finally figured it out. It's getting control, getting somewhere in the middle of this. This is what life is. The wisdom of the body, right? It is actually the same with knowing other organism or a whole ecosystem as organisms. Like I said, the individual birds that move together. Okay, what's happening out there? Are we seeing a bunch of weird stuff in terms of people acting like a weird crowd? There's a bunch of different crowds. Individuals that seem to be like zombie land. Okay, that can be good and that can be bad. We're starting to see a lot of bad stuff, but it's all individuals that are not taking themselves as individuals or, uh, again, have not all sat down and said, hey, what are we doing here? Are we really doing what's right or are we doing what's wrong, whatever? That's a difference, right? So, um, that's why we are intermediate. That's why it's so important to get a hold of this intercommunication and take care of first. Again, what did what did you know? What did Michael Jackson say? It's the man in the mirror. Take care of yourself, and this is a way to do this. If you got some questions, you want to get checked out, you want me to help you. Jason Eagle, 734-985-5891, Strategic Healing. Go to my Facebook page, Strategic Healing. Go to my YouTube, which is Jason Eagle QRA. And until next time, I'll see you. Thanks. Bye-bye.
Hey, HR. Good to see you. Hope you don't mind me using this document. <laughs> it was it's a great document. I'm glad to get it on the air. Bye, everybody.